All right. Hello, everybody. This is a root piece I found on the beach. I just had it over my chainsaw carving tent, and I was cleaning it up. I used my die grinder and a sander and the cut saw shaping disc. I'm going to show some pit, some pictures of it right now. So the first will be the die grinder to get in holes like this. Um, then the shaper thing, the cut saw shaper. You can see the marks from it right here. And then the sander just kind of um, sanded up. It kind of looks like an old dinosaur bo bone. Um, I'm not too sure. What I want to do, why I chose this today, because this is going to be back to the basics. I'm going to carve a wood spirit on it. But why I chose this piece to show you, like, when you first get a piece of wood like this, look, it could be like a deer head or something with his nose on the right there and some kind of weird creature. When you first get a piece like this and you find it on the beach or in the forest, could have plants in here, like dirt growing in here. Sometimes the, the, the shape of it changes. Once you clean up all the gray on the outside. Um, I don't know what kind of wood this is. It's spalted a bit. It might be. You see some spaltings going on right here. It might be a um, chunk of, uh, uh, I can't think of the name. But so, like I said, when you first get a piece like this and you want to clean it all up and clean out all these nooks and crannies, things change and things move around. So it's not the original you can't, sometimes you can't carve what you originally thought you were going to carve on it. So this is hollow here. I think maybe if I, if I make it a bit hollower in here more, I can make this a succulent holder. I don't want to spend a lot of time on this. I also flatten this down so it sits nice and flat. That's one thing I do before I start doing the carving itself when I have a piece like this. I make sure it sits flat. It's a little bit tippy, but I think it's going to be okay. So I think, well, I don't know. I just don't know. I don't want to spend too much time on this because it's super hot in this uh, carve. Drop my little Dremel room here. I think what I'm going to do, back to the basics, I'm going to carve a wood spirit on here, right here. Maybe I'll even carve two. But you can see here it's cracked. Um... And you got some spalting here. That's not a crack. It's Well, it kind of is separated a bit. I'm using a Dremel 4000. You do not have to have a Dremel. You can use a fake knockoff Dremel that you can get on Amazon for like $20 or $30. Um, Tack Life is good. Um, what's another? Tack Life's good. The Wens are good. You can hook up the Dremel Flex Shaft. I do suggest get, you get yourself the Dremel Flex Shaft and hook it up to the cheaper ones. I don't know if I said this is the Dremel 4000. What I'm going to be running here is a cut saw flame burr. This is my favorite go-to burr right here. You can use the tip of it to get shallow carvings. You can use the side of it to get uh, deeper carvings. But this is basically my go-to burr all the time when I'm blocking things out with the Dremel. Okay, so if you want to get these cut saw, just go to the description below. There's an arrow where it says more or something. And it will take you to the cut saw site. Save yourself 5%. You know, I suggest don't use the Dremel bits to do this. This is this is what you want to this is what you want to get for the very beginning wood carvers. These cut saws or the saber tooths or a Fordham even make some. Um, these will save you a lot of time. See the little spikes on it. Let's see if we can get a better zoom in here. And um, I don't know. I barely ever use uh, Dremel carving bits they're just kind of for me they're useless so let's draw on our wood spirit put the camera in the overhead and get uh, going on this very beginning wood spirit okay so when i showed it before the first thing you want to do is make sure it sits flat on the table so i know it sits flat and this is this is it so where do you want to like so if there'd be plants back here um what what would you see like for, this would be the front this would be looking at you you'd be looking at it this way but I think we're okay to carve a wood spirit right here. Um, somebody, when I was doing a live uh, knife carving, I'm not a very good knife carver or Dremel carver, somebody um, said, why do I like doing wood spirits so much? And I said, I thought about it, and I said, well, why do I like doing wood spirits so much? Well, anybody can do them, and they're fun. They don't have to look like real wizards. As long as you can get this nose and eyebrows to pop off, you're good to go. So there's the nose. 
And for the very beginners, this is a formula that I always use. I've done so many now, I don't even need to draw this on. But the bridge of the nose, don't draw it on too thin there. Okay? Leave it thicker. It's better to leave it thicker because you can always remove later. You can always re remove more later. It's harder to add more on. You'd have to carve a lot deeper. So then our eyes would be right here. So these would be our eyebrows. And this is our nose. And I like to keep this length the same and this length the same. It's just easier to do it, keep everything the same when you draw it on at first. Because then when you carve it, it's kind of equal. You, when you're doing the face, you want to try and... Oh, sorry, I should have a center line. You want to try and keep the two sides of the face the same. This isn't the case on this one, but because it's going to be, who knows, we might carve another wood spirit up here, like I said. So this one's not going to be that detailed. We'll just we'll get curving. We'll have fun and see where, see where it goes. And anybody can do this. If you draw it on like this and you follow these steps, I'm not even, like this mustache, it's not even going on yet. Okay, I'm not even drawing it on yet. Well, I did, but we're gonna carve. We're gonna carve lightly below these eyebrows, straight across. Then we're gonna start carving deep. And where I'm gonna carve deep here is from here. So like all around here is I'm gonna carve deep to get that nose to pop off. Then, if you want, you can slowly take off some of the eyes where the eyes are in the cheekbones. So, say his face side of his face will be here. Then, you know, then you carve his cheekbones, you give him a bump here. I always forget to do that bump. It's like a cheekbone bump. Okay, so let's get the fan going. The Dremel fired up. So I'm going to cut underneath these eyebrows and block out this nose. Then we'll worry about everything else. All right, so stand by. Okay, for the very beginners, this is my duck dust collector table. This um, is hooked up to a dust collector. There's pipes underneath here, and you'll see lots of the dust getting sucked down here. I do have videos in my playlist on this. It's good to get when you're carving uh, indoors. Or even if you got a shop to get one of these tables is super awesome. I got my Dremel hooked up. Um, like I said, I'm going to be using this Cutsol Extreme Flame Burr. I do run a foot pedal. So my foot pedal is on and off. And lots of people ask me, what speed do I carve at? Well, I always carve full speed so my pedal my dremel is, is cranked up maximum and my pedal is just for on and off i always carve the fastest i can get this to spin sometimes i'll, I'll push deeper i'll push harder and you'll hear it go Mah! and I'll, when i'm doing around the nose i'll just go really late to the touch but i always run this full speed i think with these bits you're better off running at full speed and then learning a heavy touch or a lighter touch because um well, they can leave lots of marks and stuff. I just, that's just, I carve fast with these. I think the faster that I carve with these, the better it is for me. But don't be a Geordie. Um, don't carve fast and heavy like I do. Okay, so let's turn the fan on. So I'll just give you an example. Where's the, where's the foot pedal? Come on, foot pedal, where are you hiding? So there you go, okay? So the foot pedal for the Dremel just works on and off. There's no speed control. Let's turn the fan on. And I'm going to start, like I said, I'll do underneath these eyes first. Sorry, I think I, I don't know if I said, but this is birch wood. I'm pretty sure it's birch. So there's our cut for our eyes. Let's see if we can get some better lighting here. And then um, the nose. Okay, the bottom of the nose. Okay, you can see I'm starting to get pretty deep into here. It's the, the whole burrs in there. Let's see if we can get zoom in a bit. I'm getting pretty deep in here. Now, so because this is when you can break your inner flex shaft. You know, if you, if this... If your Dremel's still running and this burr stops spinning with your flex shaft, good chance that you broke your inner flex shaft. When you got two walls like this and your burr's in there like that, it's a good, you might break your flex shaft because 
the burr gets trapped in there. So when I go a little bit deep, then I'll start removing the wood slowly. So then you, you only got one edge, you don't have two. Okay, below the eyes, bridge of the nose, beside the nose, spin it around. I don't like to have a vise, I like to be able to spin my piece around. See, I'm just slowly removing the wood, let the bird do the work. Remove some wood below the nose again. So there you go. Now your nose is sticking off. Boom. If you can start if you can get to that point, you're winning the races. Okay? Let's um draw our mustache on now. So let's just go like this. You can do a little narrow mustache like this down here. Or you can give him a wide mustache. Coming off the face. Let's give him a wide mustache. Okay, so I'm going to kind of see how I push this one over a bit so it's kind of blowing in the wind. Whoosh, see? So now what we'll do is we'll just cut not too deep on the side of the mustache yet. Oops, hit a little rock. Sometimes you get the rocks with, with the roots too. Okay, now you can remove some wood here beside the mustache. Okay, now to the other side, spin it around. Sometimes you got to put your piece upside down. Perfect. So there's our mustache in. All right. Eyebrows, nose, mustache. Now let's... Like on this piece, I'm not trying to carve a wizard. I'm just trying to carve somewhat kind of a face. So I'm going to cut on the, let's see, on the outside of this line. So there's your cheekbone there. And when you carve spalted wood, see how it's different colors in here? It's trickier to carve because you're going to get, you, like this white stuff softer and it's kind of punkier, means it's softer and you you're going to carve deep and then it's going to get harder. You just got to learn how to adapt. See when I'm in that channel, I pull it really fast. Because I don't want it to get stuck in there. Now let's do the other side. OK, 
Okay, so now let's see if we can get some better camera. I don't care how long this video is. So now we got the two sides of our face. Now let's start rounding this off. Actually, forehead. You know, it's good to start off with do your forehead first, but that's more kind of chain. So anyways, there's so many different ways to do it. So there's our forehead. I'm going to cut this in deep. See how it sunk in there? Let's start tapering it back. So I start tapering the forehead back. Split the eyebrows. Okay, before we get too ahead of ourselves, let's draw the eyebrows on. And now let's cut on the outside of the line, on the forehead side of, like, of the eyebrows to get the eyebrows to uh, stick off. Kind of taper the eyebrows. So right there I'm hitting some super soft punky wood. So you just kind of have to adapt. Now let's kind of... Oh boy. Oh boy. Things are getting out of hand. Let's kind of... I'm going to kind of round these off here to make it seem like he's got cheekbones. Okay, same with the other side. When I'm carving this side, I'm looking at the other side too. Try and make them equal. This is definitely not an easy piece of wood to carve because it's so punky. Okay, so I look at that side and then I try and make this side equal to that. So I see that this side, because I lost that part where it was punky, I got to take some more of this side off. Okay, so there's that. I'm not really 100% satisfied with this uh, camera angle.
So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut, even though we got our, cut, our mustache cut here, I'm going to cut deep here like this. And then we'll push our mustache down and we'll cut it. We'll, this is, these are going to carry up to be the nostrils later once we cut that nose in deeper. So I'm going to cut on this line and bring it down, cut on this line, bring it down. Then I'm going to push, I'm going to cut underneath the nose, okay? Make the nose stick farther off. Then I'm going to round this mustache off down inside these lines. So let me get, do one side at a time to give you an example. Okay, so that's that. I like to... Okay. Now let's carve the mustache down in there. Cut below the nose. Okay, so, you see our nose is sticking off farthest now, it's sticking off far, if you want this nose to stick farthest off the face, just cut those eyebrows down, cut, cut them deeper into the piece, and then recut them, so let's do that. Okay, so the eyebrows are gone. Now you can decide if you want to make your eyebrows up higher now or like or lower. So let's put them right about here. Cut deeper beside the nose. Start removing the wood. Like when I'm carving this side, I'm looking at this, when I'm carving this side, I'm looking at this side. Oops. You gotta cut those in a bit higher, cut them in a bit higher. Okay, split the eyebrows again. Cut the eyes deeper. What it's really about Okay, so there we're kind of blocked out a face. Now let's carve deeper on the side of the nose again. Let's remove the wood again.
Okay. So why I did that is because now the bridge of the nose, let's slope it back this way, okay? If we got to cut our eyes back farther, eyebrows back farther, we can. The farther that you cut these eyebrows back, deeper in there, the farther you can get the nose to stick farthest off the face, if you want to go for that effect. But what we're going to start doing now, actually, okay, let's taper the nose back. When, you, when you're just learning this, sometimes you'll have to recarve things like three or four times. You know, so look at this nose here. That's good enough. We'll remove some more wood underneath these eyes here. Okay, so we got to recarve the eyebrows in again. Okay, so let's start shaping this nose. So now you can see I'm doing, now when I'm shaping the nose, I'm doing lighter to the touch. Okay, so let's look at the face. This one is deeper than this side. This side's deeper than this side. So let's start taking some of this side down. Okay, so this this fellow here is gonna have a big big schnauzer. Like, you know, I could carve this nose deeper, push everything back, but I think I'm just gonna keep running with this. Like, I could cut. Uh, let's see here. I could cut this thinner, right? Cut it thinner. You end it here, and then I could recarve all this in. But you know, I don't want to complicate things. So here is is inner mustache like that uh, I hope you guys are able to follow along with me if I'm not getting too carried away here it's just really about trying to make the two sides of the face equal so actually you know what let's take this nose let's curve this nose back a little bit further so
See how I'm just curving it deeper? Okay, now our mustache. So now you can draw your mustache on wherever you want to draw it on. You can, actually, you know what? I got to keep working on this nose, this nose here. You know, this is a super tricky piece of wood to carve. I probably shouldn't even upload this video, but maybe you guys can learn a trick along the way. So, um, let's see here. I got to make this side of the face a bit thinner. I gotta make this side a bit thinner here. Okay, so now you can, now your nose is set, it's pretty well done. You got your lines here, your smile lines. You can put your mustache up here. You can put it down lower if you want. You can put it wherever you want to put it. I think right here is a good spot for me, though. We're going to bring it down like this, and then we're going to bring this one down like that. And once again, it's just about removing wood. But you don't want to cut too deep in here yet, because you still got to set your bottom lip, right? So... Now slowly remove the wood where your bottom lip will be. I just like to remove the wood down here so you don't see that cut line anymore. Okay, so good. Now, our lip, if you look at the face, your lip sticks farther out in your eyes, but we're going to punch these eyes deeper. So I think we're at a pretty good depth for our lip here compared to the eyes. So I'll draw it on. All I do is just do a straight line here and then remove this wood here. We could round the lip after, maybe with a less aggressive burr. Okay, I'll round the lip now. Make it a bit smaller.
kind of clean up the carving for a minute. Take those cheek dogs bones down a bit. Okay, so let's stop at that and take a little break here. Okay, so this is what we got so far. Um, the face is a little bit wide. That's completely fine with me. It's better to, to have it wider than thinner. I'm trying to improve my faces to make them wider now. They're always too, th I always take too much wood off down here. So that's why I, I left it wide. Um, you know, that's basically, this lip is a little bit too far back. Let's see if we can give this a, a side view here. Well, not really once we push those eyes back. I do suggest for the very beginner, find yourself a nice solid piece of wood, not spalted. Like you can see that different colors in there. That whiter stuff is a lot softer than the darker stuff. And when you're carving with these bits, it will just boom, it will dig in super deep. So I had to keep on adjusting. It was hard for me to explain what I was doing. So I think, you know, I don't want to make this video too complicated for everybody. Um, carving eyes and stuff like that. I don't even know we have a knot. We have a, oh no, that's not a knot. That's more of the uh, spool thing right there. But I think with this piece, let's lay it down here and see how it looks. So that's how it would look. Your plants would be back here. You know, what could I, what could I carve right here? Here. I think if I carved another wood spirit and showed how I blend them in together, I think that would probably be pretty neat for this video. Yeah? What do you guys think? So I'll draw the other wood spirit on. I won't I already showed you guys how to carve the eyes and I know it got a little bit um, complicated because I had to keep on moving things around because the wood was super soft. It would dig in. And I cut see how I carved the nose shorter, try to make things more equal. You know, there is scales you can find to make how big the nose to the uh, eyes you know so these eyes are supposed to be two here one and then two here like lengths two lengths here one length here and then two lengths here might be a little bit shy here but that's okay you know we're not really pushing for realism we're just trying to make a fantasy kind of cool face so i'm going to block out the eyes i'm going to get the wood spit the the eyes and the nose carved into here and I'll show you how easy it is to blend things in together and what else we can do to spruce this piece up a bit. Okay, so this is kind of a funny looking weird face ET guy. It doesn't matter. You can see it's a face. Then I carve this one here too. This wood here was so punky, it just kept on taking his forehead away and deeper and deeper and deeper and still super punky, super soft. Um, a good type of wood for people curving with the Dremels for the very beginner is cedar is good. Um, I like Western red cedar. It's, it's softer than uh, Eastern juniper cedar. Um, cottonwood bark's very good carve. Basswood's good to carve. It's a little bit fuzzy. Birch is good to carve. Pine's good to carve. Ba and the best kind of wood to carve is basically free wood. So any wood you can get free to practice on. You'll learn what's punky. You'll learn the spalting. You'll learn hardwood, softwood. So just keep on practicing on any type of wood you can get for free. I think that's the best. So that's what it would look like now. Overhead, plants there. Who knows? I could even drill a hole. I got enough thickness to put plant there. I could carve something here on another video too, right? So maybe that's what I'll do tomorrow. So... I think now it's time for the Carving Fusion free-for-all. I got the uh, 
what I did these eyes with is this uh, aluminum cutting burrs. I need to make a whole series on the different burrs that I use too, if you guys want to see that. Um, these are not aluminum. These are cheap Chinese cutting burrs. And that's what I did the eyes with. Don't worry about curving real eyes for the very beginners because if you don't, I'm not very good at curving eyes myself. And I think wood spirits, they don't have to have eyes. I've said that on all my videos. You know, so like, so this one here that doesn't, I just hold them out. I cut below the eye, beneath the eyebrows, right? And then I did a little cut up there so that you got the, um, gives you kind of eyebrows, separates it. See? It's that simple cut there. kind of gives you top eyelids. So now I think like curving fusion free for all. I got this bit on here. I think I'm just going to go crazy. Do my swoosh lines. I think this one um, will do beard hairs. I'm going to separate. See this? Here I let the wood speak to me. Because you see right here. See that line? It kind of looks like it's like this. Then it will be like that. So I'm going to give this guy like a Fu Manchu here. And maybe just kind of a couple stragglers down here. And up here, I'm just going to kind of, I don't know, I'm just going to, this forehead, there's no forehead on this one. Like his forehead should be up here, but it's gone. So I'm just going to do swoosh cuts here. And I'm going to blend everything in together. Just with it by nice cuts, you know. And the more that you kind of do cuts like that, the swoosh cuts and just kind of like making nice smooth cuts and making your lines not like crisscross, just smooth. The nicer that your piece are gonna is gonna look, and you're just getting used to this tool. It takes a while to get used to this, you know. So the very one of the big parts about carving with the Dremel is getting used to the flex shaft and how it can jump and what it can do and can't do. You know, it's best to run at full speed, go a nice light touch, slowly remove the wood, not like I do. Don't be a Jordy. Let the bird do the work. Let the tool do the work and slowly get your shape. Okay, so that's some suggestions I can give. I'm going to do a deep cut under here to separate this from this. So it'll make it look like he's kind of got like a little Fu Manchu mustache there. Okay, so he's got a nice crack along the nose, and uh, that's what we came up with. I just carved, just went crazy, cut in the Fu Manchu thing there. Um, some stuff here, and some stuff there, and some stuff in here. I could probably clean up those cuts a bit better, but I just kind of went crazy, and that's it. You know, this was not a very good uh, piece of wood to try and say how to carve a wood spirit, but... Hopefully there's something that you guys will be able to learn from the very beginners on this video. I don't know if I'm going to do any more carving on this. I don't know if it's worth it to carve this. So it would sit like this. There's the planter. There's your spirits. And the plants will go right back in here. So I'm going to keep this myself and put it in my garden. And I'm not even going to put a clear coat on it or anything. I did sand it with this um, sanding mandrel. I'm not too sure if Peter Blair is still selling his, but this is the one that you get on Amazon. I think you get like 10 for like 10 bucks. And what this is, is um, it's, I believe this is in my Amazon store. This is just uh, this kind of sandpaper here. It comes on rolls. It's emery cloth, so it's cloth back sandpaper. Don't When you're using this little one for your Dremel, I, I suggest don't use the uh, belt sand, the big belt sanders where you can cut them up. Try and get yourself some soft stuff. This stuff's um, this stuff is called the cling spore. There it is, cling spore. Half of the name's gone, but yeah. So I just run around, and when you use this too, turn your Dremel down quite a bit. Be 
because if you run your Dremel full speed when you got this on there, when the sandpaper's full, like squares like this, you will fry your Dremel. Trust me, I've fried many of Dremels sanding. So that's that. So hopefully, also I'd love to read in the comments for you very beginners, um, anything with wood spirits. I'm going to be doing some more wood spirit videos here. Um, it seems like that's what everybody loves to carve. It's what I love to carve, so why not make more videos for the very beginners? Um, if you guys have anything that you want me to focus on, the wood spirit, please leave in the comments. I do read all the comments. I think I'm going to put this one aside and call her done. I'll sign it. Yes, I need to sign it. I haven't signed it yet. Call this one done. And I think if I get time tomorrow, I got this cane here. I'll carve a wood spirit on here with the smaller bits and maybe an eagle head on the end here. So if you guys want to see me carve, like um, any tips or tricks I can give carving a smaller wood spirit, please leave them in the comments. And um, yeah, I'll wait for a couple days to read the comments so I can get some tips from you guys, what you want me to focus on when I'm making the videos. That's it, everybody. Hope everybody's good. And uh, having fun carving. Anybody can do it. Carving Fusion. Over and out.